what's the difference between a flooded battery and an AGM battery? Well, first of all, it's the internal construction. But these differences in internal construction mean that there's different internal resistance. So you may be thinking to yourself, battery resistance? I can't measure the resistance in a battery with the volt ohmmeter but it can be measured with a battery tester. And this is part of one of the most critical measurements in the performance of a battery. In other words, when you're measuring the internal resistance of a battery, you're measuring the plates, the post, the electrolyte, or the paste inside an AGM battery. Typically, an AGM battery will produce more power or cold cranking amps than a flooded battery. This is due to the construction of the battery and the lower internal resistance. So how do you apply internal resistance when you have a vehicle in your bay that is either not starting or the battery is dead? First of all, it starts with the charger. Because an AGM battery has a lower internal resistance, it needs a special charger. But it can absorb a charge much faster. And you do not want to use a large amount of amps. 40, 70 amps to do a fast charge on an AGM battery may destroy the internals because it has a lower internal resistance. This may be fine for a flooded acid battery. The other consideration, well, battery monitors. Most modern vehicles, they measure the internal resistance of the battery to determine the life of the battery, so the customer is not stranded. When the vehicle is serviced and the battery is replaced, you need to reset the battery monitor. This may involve going in through the information screen on the dash or using a scan tool. If you don't do this, well, that brand new battery, it could become overcharged because over time, a battery will have a higher internal resistance as it ages. And if the vehicle thinks it's the old battery, well, it could overcharge that battery, cause it to overheat, and eventually fail. I'm Andrew Markell. Thank you very much.